Okay, guys, welcome. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Um, welcome to VMware Horizon in 12 minutes. I'm going to explain VMware Horizon based on the use case we actually did, and I'm going to try to fit this all in 12 minutes. Uh, if I can't make it, please be sure to contact me in some way, shape, or form. I'll be here all week. Um, we all need a disclaimer, so please read it carefully. I'll get it out of the way. Thanks to my good friend Wouter Kirsten. He's not here at the moment, I think, but you get the idea. All right, let's go. Um, this is me. I'm a technical architect at PQR, um, and I do all sorts of stuff with VMware Horizon. If you want to know anything else about me, come talk to me. I'm keeping this short because because of the small time frame. Also, if there's any questions, please save them after the session because the, the time frame is really short. So. Um, we all need this week to have some AI in our sheets, so I guess I managed. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to tell you a story, and it's not a fairy tale. It's a really a thing that actually happened. So this is about a company. They do all sorts of uh, really brilliant things with 3D scanning. They, they, they mount that stuff on drones, and they generate a lot of data. A lot of data. Those data sets are sometimes uh, a terabyte in size and more. So it takes a lot of CPU graphics and whatnot to process this stuff. You need GPUs, you need CPUs, and you need a lot of fast storage to be able to process that data. And even then, their data sets to manage them would sometimes take hours. They would use big laptops, the big mobile workstations, to be able to do this. But once they uh, start getting into those data sets and try to do anything with them, that mobile workstation is fully loaded. CPU 100%, GPU 100%, so they can't do anything else for hours, literally. So even sending an email during a generative uh, state like that would be nearly impossible. Well, and then COVID hit. Their data is all in their centralized data center. Um, they weren't allowed to go into the office anymore, so they couldn't actually download the data to their laptops. What did they do? They actually got some USB hard drives. Bear with me. They copied the data to the USB hard drives, and they started driving around the country to be able to give that data to their colleagues. Now, that's horrible. I mean, in terms of security, that data just went out the door. That's horrible. So how do we solve this? We took all that stuff and we centralized it. We put it into a server into their data center. Um, I also asked, uh, because this is about what Horizon is, I asked ChatGPT what Horizon, what it thinks Horizon is. Well, I think the description is really accurate because it just allows you to remote into your either applications or desktops remotely from any device, remember? So talking about Horizon, this is a, uh, a sheet I usually use to explain this to customers. It looks really complicated, but trust me, it's not. There's actually just a few components and a few things that you need on the side, like, like Active Directory, like DNS, like NTP, all the things that should be working anyway, right? Okay. So what it actually looks like is this. You can just use your either VI desktop or application from anywhere you want and from any device you want. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy your VDI. Um, so what this meant for them, uh, once they had Horizon up and running, and this was, of course, uh, including a big GPU for their data sets, um, they could access their data, and their data did not need to move outside of the office anymore. The server that VDI was running on was actually in the exact same rack as where their file server with all those data sets was. With a 10 or even a 25 gigabit link between them, loading those data sets would be way, way faster. I mean, they, they downloaded it to their laptops, and in their office they actually had a few 100 megabit connections. So downloading a terabyte of data and uploading it again and downloading it again and uploading it again, that's horrible. This way, they could easily, easily open those data sets, do something with it, and there you go. In terms of productivity, the official numbers is that they gained about 30% in productivity in their projects 
because they could now actually, from that laptop, just do their email, do their Teams, whatever, and also start not one, but even two or three VDI sessions, doing all that work simultaneously. So that, I think the numbers are way higher. Security, I just uh, gave you the example of the USB drive, which they drove around the country. They don't need to do that anymore. It's now centralized and kept in their secure data center with a secured desktop, with a secured way of connecting into that environment. Because, of course, all sorts of two-factor authentication are actually uh, able to be used. It's uh, Radius, it's SAML, it's, uh, what's the other one, RSA. It's all capable. So, and this is the end result for them. They can now work wherever, whenever, from any device, be it a iPad or a Chromebook or uh, even an Android phone would work, just to be able to access that data in a secure way. So one thing other I want to mention to you guys is uh, who of you here knows that the VMware Fling site was discontinued? So a couple of hands, but not too many. Uh, the Fling site is now offline. It redirects to, a, I think, a GitHub page. So if you want to use the, the Flings, and who of you here knows what those Flings are, by the way? Show of hands. Okay. So VMware Flings was a site on which uh, a lot of VMware people made all kinds of handy tools available, not productized, but just without support. Um, that you could download there and use in your environment. They had tools for Horizon, for Workspace ONE, for migrations, for, and a lot of other VMware stuff as well. But like I said, the Fling site is now discontinued. So for you guys, for the, um, the EUC tools, you can find them on TechZone now. So if you want to note this, please do. If you don't know them, please look them up. There are very many handy tools in there that you might be able to use in your, um, in your environment. Um, if you want to know something about the other tools, uh, please look at my previous session of uh, yesterday as well, because I talked about two features within VMware Horizon that actually nobody uh, knows about. Um, who here knows of VMware Horizon recording? Okay, no one. Um, who here knows about VMware Horizon logon monitor? One. <laughs> Okay, um, suggestion to all of you, please go and look at my previous session. They will be recorded. They will be available on the vbrownback YouTube channel, because uh, I'll explain to you those components are by default in the Horizon stack and usable for your infrastructure. One is to actually completely record a session, and the other one is to uh, who here has ever had to troubleshoot a slow logon in their environment? Thought so. Okay, that logon monitor is just a service you can enable by default, and it shows you all the logon information you want. And it's, it's in there by default, so please take a look. I see I'm going too fast. Cool. Um, if you want to catch up with me, please connect with me uh, in either this way or look me up in person here. This is a mandatory sheet as well. Please take the survey in the app, so... I know I did a good job or not. And for now, that's all.